Hello there, my fellow crew members, and welcome to another Warhammer 40k lore video from my Imperial Navy series. In today's episode, I will be covering a very widespread and overall popular piece of air power that is beloved by the Navy and Imperial Guard alike for its versatility. And this lovely bird is none other than the Valkyrie Transport slash Gunship, or as it's officially classified, the Valkyrie Assault Carrier. I am your host, the Grimdark Narrator, and without further ado, let us learn more about it, shall we? The Valkyrie is a vertical takeoff and landing airborne assault carrier, or VTOL used primarily by the members of the Imperial Guard as both a ground support gunship and a transport for airborne combat regiments, like the Tempesta Scions or the Elysian Drop Troopers. Despite serving the tactical needs of the Imperial Guard, a Valkyrie and its crew are usually composed of pilots and armsmen drawn from the Imperial Navy's Aeronautica Imperialis, and are provided to the Guard on an as-needed basis. The Valkyrie Assault Carrier is a maneuverable, well-armed, twin-engine attack craft. The durable and versatile payload of the Valkyrie chassis, combined with the aircraft's powerful engines and stable handling, make it a popular choice for a broad spectrum of battlefield roles. These attack craft use atmospherically sealed cockpits and omnicombustible promethium in their vector turbojets allowing them to be deployed against enemy flyers in the upper atmosphere and against ground forces on even the most hostile worlds. Sporting a troop transport capacity on par with the ubiquitous Chimera APC, the Valkyrie is often used to swiftly redeploy squads of infantry, strikes at key targets by cadres of Tempesta Scions, reinforcement of buckling battle lines by grim-faced bands of veterans, even hasty transportation of ranking officers. All of these and much more are the duty of the Valkyrie. With a few notable exceptions, most Imperial Guard formations will still have small numbers of Valkyries attached to them on a temporary basis. Such aircraft are, first and foremost, the property of the Aeronautica Imperialis. During extended ground operations, however, they are usually repainted to match their assigned regiment, and their pilots report directly to that regiment's senior officers. With vectored engines permitting vertical takeoff and landing, these versatile aircraft can twist and turn through the rigors of low altitude dogfights, or hover while troops rappel from their holds. In addition, every Valkyrie is equipped with sufficient grav chutes for all passengers allowing expedient, if hazardous, high-speed deployment into the thick of combat. To burst from the steel cocoon of a Valkyrie's transport bay into the icy air above packed ranks of enemies can be jarring, even by the standards of the Imperial Guard. As the shooted infantry descend towards the seething mass of foes, they are peppered with fire. Those grav troopers who manage to touch down may find themselves within feeding range of some mutated monstrosity, or set alight by gouts of demonic fire. It's fun days to be a paratrooper. But for all this, the shock of a Valkyrie drop is even more terrifying to the enemy, who find themselves fighting on a new and unexpected front with no warning other than the roar of an overflying Valkyrie. Carefully orchestrated offensives are thrown into utter disarray as lasgun wielding infantry are disgorged to assail the flanks and rear of the assaulting army. Artillery and psychers unleashing their destructions far from the front lines are surrounded and brought down by the massed fire of the descending troopers. Valkyries have a storied history of service along Imperial infantry and armor regiments and are sometimes referred to by Imperial Guardsmen as the Wings of the Emperor. Certainly those Guardsmen who have seen a ravaging Carnifex blasted apart from high by a Valkyrie's Hellstrike missiles, or been lifted from the path of an unrushing Orc Horde in the tight confines of the transport bay, have nothing but respect for these exceptional aircraft. Airborne assaults play a crucial role in the battle plans of many Imperial Commanders. 
due to the high risk of such maneuvers and the high reward of eliminating key enemy assets, it is common for Valkyries to be loaded with the best forces available, Guard Veterans or Tempestus Scions. However, certain pragmatic officers have achieved decisive victories by using Valkyries to distribute rank-and-file soldiers across large swathes of the battlefield. One such company commander, Yeta Baki, of the Atonian 992nd Vagrant Blades, has used Valkyries in multiple city fights across the Imperium to seed the battlefield with his tunnel rats before engaging the enemy. Once deployed, each infantry squad sets up choke points and ambushes across the zone of battle. The foe then faces an unenviable decision. Either move at a crawl, trying not to stumble into the infantry's traps, or barrel ahead full pace to outrun the deadly rain of aerial fire unleashed by the Valkyries. Even when troop transport is not required, or when the battlefield conditions make such actions impossible, Valkyries are still an invaluable air asset. Their armaments allow them to carry out hit-and-run strikes and strafing runs on ground forces while swatting enemy flyers from the sky. Though certain Xeno's attack craft are faster, few boast the balance of offensive and defensive capability that makes the Valkyrie so resilient and versatile. The Valkyrie's primary armament is a multi-laser that is mounted just to the side of the cockpit and two Hellstrike missile pods carried under its wings. The Valkyrie is also equipped with two door-mounted heavy bolters that are each manned by one gunner. This weapon's configuration allows the Valkyrie, when using its VTOL capabilities, to stay on station once its troops have dropped and provide air support or covering fire during a difficult insertion. The Valkyrie can replace its multi-laser with a LAS cannon, and can also replace its Hellstrike missiles with two external fuel tanks for extended operation or two multiple rocket pods. The aircraft can also be equipped with ejector seats, extra armor plating for the cockpit, flare or chaff launchers, infrared targeting systems, and illumination flares. When a Valkyrie is expected to be assigned to the Guard for a long-duration assignment, usually to provide combat air support and transport, the Aeronautica Imperialis modifies the aircraft by adding more heavily reinforced armor to better protect it in close firefights with enemy forces. The reinforced armor reduces the Valkyrie's maximum altitude and range due to the increased use of Promethium fuel, but it does make the Valkyrie a far more robust combat platform when it is carrying out its VTOL transport and gunship roles. The Valkyrie is capable of carrying 12 Guardsmen, but cannot carry any Ogrins. Valkyries also possess the cargo capacity to carry modified drop sentinels, Cyclops demolition vehicles, or sentry guns, instead of a complement of guardsmen, but the added weight requires that they also carry two additional fuel tanks. There are several variants of the Valkyrie in use by the Imperium, the most famous being the Vendetta, the Vulture, and the Sky Talon. Now, I should also let you know that I've decided to make a separate video following this one, where I will cover those three variants in more detail. Some notable regiments who use or used the Valkyries are The 2nd Imperial Navy Tactical Wing They fought in the defense of Cadia during the 13th Black Crusade. The 22nd Elysian Drop Troop Regiment They fought during the Yarant Free Campaign. The 64th Elysian they took part in the ill-fated 5th Imgarl insertion. The 123rd Imperial Navy Tactical Wing. They were part of Pursuit Force Fidelis during the Battle of Kovalik 479. The 92nd Elysian. They fought against the Tyranids that escaped from a secret Adeptus Mechanicus research facility on Anfelion 4. The 184th Imperial Navy Tactical Wing. They transported stormtroopers during Operation Comet, which was part of the Taros campaign against the Tau. The 71st Imperial Navy Tactical Wing. 
They participated in Operation Deathblow during the Taros campaign and during the Helion 5 campaign. The 181st Elysian. They served during the raid on Castorel Novum. The 51st 36th Imperial Navy Wing. They supplied 80 Valkyries to aid the raid on Castorel Novum. The 226th Elysian Drop Troop Regiment. They fought during the defense of Betalis Free against the Eldar of Craftworld by Mira. The 205th Imperial Navy Tactical Wing. They were inducted into the Inquisitorial Service by Inquisitor Gruberman during the Tirama Secundus campaign. Ordo Hereticus Inquisitor Tyrus. He used to transport stormtroopers during the purging of Gladrinus VI. Ordo Malleus Inquisitor Hector Rex. He used to transport stormtroopers during the judgment of Helanus. And lastly, a few technical specifications for you concerning the Valkyrie. The Forge Worlds of Origin are Mars, Vos, Artemia, and Esteban Seven. There are 10 known patterns. Its crew consists of one pilot, one navigator, and two door gunners. Its weight is 13 tons when empty. Its length is 18.5 meters. Its wingspan is 16.9 meters. Its height is 4.8 meters. Its operational ceiling is at 13,000 meters. Its maximum speed is 1,100 kilometers an hour. Its range is 2,000 kilometers in atmosphere. And its hull and superstructure armor is 75 millimeters. And this, my friends, is what I wanted to tell you on the Valkyrie Assault Carrier for today. As I mentioned a couple of minutes ago, I will also be covering its three main variants in the next Imperial Navy episode. Would you use Valkyries in your own Air Force? Let me know in the comments below. Was this video informative or entertaining? In that case, please consider clicking the like button and subscribing for future content. I thank you very much for watching, and I wish you all a superb day. The Emperor Protects